Welcome to John Gets Games, where today we'll be playing a full two-player game of Lacrimosa with my friend Matt, who's going to join us here in the studio. We're going to start things off with a brief overview of the game, then we are going to play the entire game, teaching it as we go, and we'll finish things off with a discussion at the end, talking about how the game went. Now, before we get to all that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and help the production of more videos just like this one, then please go to patreon.com slash John games. There you can gain access to tons of exclusives, including watching my opinions episodes, where I've talked about hundreds of games, uh, both the things I like and don't like about those, and I try to put those out a couple times a month. Uh, also, you can watch some videos early and advertisement-free, and this is one of those videos that went out early. And finally, you can gain access to an exclusive podcast feed, where you can hear audio versions of all of the vlogs that I make, as well as those opinions episodes. Now, coming back to this game, I would like to ask that if, while you're watching this, you find a moment where we cheated, or maybe you see a turn where we should have done something differently, or if you just have thoughts about the game and want to discuss it, then please comment about that down below because we'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Hey, Matt, welcome back. Hey, John. I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, we're playing Lacrimosa, and uh, yeah, let's start things off with a brief overview of it, then we'll jump into the game. So the theming on this game is kind of funny. Um, it's based around Mozart, but specifically um, across multiple eras of Mozart's life, and in particular after he's died. <laughs> so Matt and I are both patrons of Mozart, and we have been for a while. Mozart has just died, and he did not quite finish his final uh, piece, which was the Lacrimosa. So it's unfinished, and Mozart's widow um, wants our help, essentially in commissioning other composers who were, uh, I guess, uh, students of Mozart for the most part, to actually complete this. But realistically, what we're trying to do is compete to be the most uh, frequently cited person in Mozart's memoirs. Uh, so <laughs> we're essentially trying to um, talk up our experiences with Mozart to his widow so that when she writes about Mozart's life, we get talked about a lot. And so the Victory Point track is essentially how often we are mentioned. <laughs> it's a little funky. So um, yeah, let's talk about the mechanics of the game. Uh, we're going to play through five rounds, and within each round, each one of us is going to be doing some card play. So each of us has a nine-card deck, which is identical, and in each one of the game's turns, we're going to have four cards in our hand, and they're essentially multi-use. We're going to slide one up into the top, and that's going to define the actions we do for that round, and the other one will slide into the bottom, and that will define the amount of resources we get in income. At the end of the round, we don't get those immediately. Then we do the actions from the card that we just placed. Um, that's going to involve gaining new action cards or opus cards that give us um, uh, things that we can perform or sell as the game goes on. Or we could um, talk about Mozart's travels as he wanders around Europe. Or, you know, most importantly, uh, we can help with the composition of finishing out the Lacrimosa Requiem. Uh, we do that by taking these tokens down here and we place them out over there. And there are two different composers um, that are vying to be the ones to complete this. And depending on how we put this token down, that will dictate who scores more points. And when the game is over, after we go through five rounds, we're going to get points for, again, how we've actually uh, hired these composers to finish out the Requiem, as well as potentially gaining points from court tiles that we can pick up along the way, and a couple of other things. But as you can see, in general, this is a game all about trying to pick the right cards in the right moment, um, trying to modify our deck uh, as well as we can, and yeah, just trying to be talked about a whole bunch. So on that note, I think let's just start playing the game and uh, we'll teach it as we go. Um, I'm going to be the purple player down here and Matt is yellow, as you can see, and I'm the starting player. So I've got this tuning fork and this is going to pass uh, at the end of each round clockwise. So uh, the game is split up into five rounds and each round first has four action phases. So yeah, Matt and I both need to shuffle up our deck, which has, again, exactly nine cards in it, and then draw four and then we can actually start playing the game. So these are my starting four cards. And as I mentioned in the overview, the top of the card is going to dictate an action that's performed uh, on this turn by me, and the bottom of the card is going to dictate resources that I will gain at the end of the round. Um, we spend resources for a bunch of things. I just need to think about the action I want to take, and I think it's going to be this one. Uh, so this tucks into the top, and then I think I'll tuck this one into the bottom. Now, after I've done that, I can perform these actions. Uh, this action right here lets me document memories, essentially, of the 
the stuff that Mozart did and the stuff that uh, we did with Mozart, hypothetically, realistically, what that means is I can buy a new action card from the top of the board. As you can see, there's seven cards up here, and there's two different types of cards. The uh, memory cards are slid up to the top, and the opus cards are slid down to the bottom. And you can kind of tell uh, how that works because there's a little image right up here that kind of half matches up with the top of the card. And same down here, that little candle uh, just barely matches down there at the bottom. So because I'm doing this action that shows that candle icon, that means I can buy one of these cards that are slid up because, again, they have that little candle there. Now, the cost for this is printed at the bottom. This is one of any of the three resources in the game, and then they get more expensive as it goes down. And I think I'm just going to take the cheapest one. That says I can spend one of any resource. And when we look back at my board, uh, we've got these three tracks right here. Uh, there are three different resources in the game. The black is Mozart's talent. The red is uh, Mozart's journey points, essentially. And the white is uh, composition points. Now, as I said, I can spend any one of these. And I think I'll spend one talent, which is the black resource. Now, I've gained this card. And the way this works is I actually discard the card that I slid down here and remove it from the game entirely, and I slide this new card up in there, and I'll gain access to this card in my deck in the next round. Uh, also, that essentially upgraded the amount of stuff I'll get at the end of the round. That's going to get me three of the travel resource when we do end of round maintenance versus I was going to get one of the composition resource instead. So yeah, I have modified my deck, hypothetically making it a little bit stronger overall, and uh, my turn is done, and I can finish my turn by drawing two more cards from the top of my deck. All right, Matt. Cool. So it's my turn now, and uh, this is these are the action spread I'm currently looking at, uh, none of which were what I actually was hoping to do as my first turn, but that's fine. Oh, I think we need to update the card. You're right. While. Yes, these need to slide down. And then we draw a new card from the top of the deck. Uh, I do want to point out, again, the game is five rounds, and it's split into five different smaller decks. Uh, this big deck, as you can see, has these different split spots in it. And we'll explain that later on. But mm -hmm. all of these are first round cards. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do something pretty reminiscent to what John just did. Yeah. Um, uh not exactly what I was hoping to do on my first round because I had I see something on the board that looks kind of cool, but I don't want to spoil it and maybe have John <laughs> steal it. So I'm going to slide that up there like that. And I think I'm going to tuck this one down here because I'm going to, the card I'm going to pick up is essentially just going to upgrade that one in yeah. place. Yeah. So. Um, do you also want the cheapest one? Yes, I would love the cheapest one. Alrighty. So I will spend one of my. All right, this was talent? Yes. Talent. I'll spend one of my talents and essentially swap out this card where I'm basically getting the same card, but just better. More stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um, and I'll discard that. I draw up my two cards. All of these slide. And now is your turn, John. Cool. These are my four cards, and I think I'm going to go for a Requiem action. And then I'm going to tuck this card underneath for income later on. And so the Requiem action lets me actually work on the Lacrimosa, or I guess uh, hire a composer to help work on the Lacrimosa. Um, now, the way this works down here is we've got different instrument spots. Some of them have been blocked. This uh, depends on player count. Uh, the lower the players, the more of these spots are blocked. Uh, so I can essentially put one of my Lacrimosa tokens down onto any one of these openings. And I think I am going to remove this choir from right here. As you can see, we have all of these different instruments, and this is the only choir that I can essentially write into the Requiem over the course of this entire game. So I'm going to put this down into the fifth movement over here, specifically on the choir spot. And uh, when I put this token down, I can either go with this one note or this two note. I'm not a musician. I don't know the specific names yeah. for these, but um, we'll just say one and two. And the reason for that is I because... I believe it is... Uh... Eighth note and sixteenth note. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and these match up with the two composers that are down over here, which we randomly pulled at the start of the game. So the side that I put this on is going to dictate which of these composers I've just hired. And I want to hire uh, Ebler over here, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, which is the eighth note, you said? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I'll put the eighth note over here on the choir spot because I hired this from the choir. And then what I do is I have to pay the costs associated with the composer tile that's in that composer's row and in that movement. 
there are five different movements over here. And so this is the movement, essentially it's the column and that's the row. So I have to spend two of the white resource, which is composition. I have to spend three ducats and I have to spend one finance, which is essentially ongoing income in order to place that token there. Uh, so I can take this tile and then have to spend these. So the white is gonna go down to zero. So I don't have any more of that. I spend three of my money. And then my finance, it started at two money and it goes down to one. And during maintenance, we just get wherever this is. So, you know, going down on this is just lowering overall income for the game, which is a little bit of a thing. However, if you look over here, I now get the bonus of the spot that I just removed a token from. That could be resources or money or finance. <laughs> so I essentially, uh, when I cover this up, I get to go up one in the finance. So that sort of paid for itself. And at this point, I fully paid for the tile. Now I can flip it over and I put it right over here. And this has an ongoing effect, which I will be talking about very soon. I'll definitely be doing that in the first round. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the action. But I do want to briefly mention that there's a lot of points down here at the end of the game. Uh, as you can see, there's a three point and a one point spot at the bottom of uh, this movement. And those um, numbers vary. And when the game is over, for each one of these movements, we're going to count up the number of tokens from all the players that match up with each of the composers. And the composer within that movement that has more tokens on their side is going to have each token on that side be worth three points and the other composer is worth one. So a simpler way of saying that is if there's more 18th notes here than 16th notes, then all of the eighth note tokens will be worth three points each and all the 16th note tokens will be worth one. So there's a little bit of a majorities type thing going on here. And these stacks are uh, sorted by cost. So the next one over here is one more money. So they get a little bit more expensive as you go down. And uh, yeah, if there's a tie in here, then all of those tokens get the lower number. And I'm sure we'll be talking about this more. There's a lot of points to be had here, uh, but that's that's largely end game stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, that is my turn. Well, John, that was what I really wanted to do for my opening move, uh, but you beat me to the punch and I still haven't drawn the cards I need to do that. So what I think I'm gonna do instead is I think I'm going to tuck these cards, which are the exact same, uh, so it doesn't matter where I tuck them or how I tuck them, uh, which lets me write an opus. Yes. So, or I guess, uh, uh, you know, pay somebody to compose it, oh, right? Yeah, pay someone to compose <laughs> an opus. So, yeah, the opuses are the ones that are kind of slid uh, down here on the track. And you pay the resources that are on the top of the card, plus potentially some extra the farther they are down. And then you immediately get the victory points. This little wax seal is points. You get those points immediately. And then the opus can kind of hang out in front of you and potentially do better stuff for you as the game goes on. Um, the only exception here is this. If you buy the cheapest opus over here, then after paying for it, you get essentially a rebate of one of that talent resource. But specifically, you get it in the form of a disc. And these discs can be spent just like spending things on the tracks like you've seen. However, the tracks reset at the end of each round and the discs persist. So these are just nicer to have. Yeah, so I think I will essentially convert my one remaining talent point and money into a permanent yeah. Oh, we're not permanent, but a residual talent disc. Yes. Uh, and take that first opus. Cool. That and seems... you get two points, and the get... first two points of the game. Yep. And I'll just stack this right here. And then I draw the top two cards. And cool. I now have a little bit more options in what I'm going to play. <laughs> awesome. These all slide down. All right. It's my go. And I am going to tuck this up here so that I can do a travel action. And then I'll tuck this down here. Here. And now I get to do the travel action. So the way this works is Mozart starts over here in Salzburg. And when you do the travel action, you can move Mozart to literally any city or court on the board. These uh, small spots are cities and the big square spots are courts. Um, the only thing is you have to spend money in the form of ducats for every single road you cross through. Now, I'm actually not going to move. I'm just mm -hmm. going to stay here in Salzburg. And now uh, wherever you end up is where you can perform an action, which is dictated by the tile on that spot. You don't do anything for the cities that you pass through. Um, this spot right here shows that it's going to cost two journey points. And you may have noticed, but you spend journey points when you're traveling, which makes sense. You spend talent when Mozart is writing those opuses, and then you spend your composition power um, to actually get the Lacrimosa Requiem done. So these are essentially themed to actions. So yeah, I'll spend two of the red journey points, and then this gives me five resource discs of my choice in essentially any color set. 
So how many journey discs are you taking, John? Yes. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling it might be five. Yeah, I think it probably is. <laughs> I think it probably is. Yeah, because as John hasn't quite gotten into yet, he can play two journey. He gets to do two journeys exactly. per journey action. Yes, uh, we're going to see that right now. Although, real quick, uh, this city tile is now discarded. We remove it, and we're going to refill this uh, during maintenance at the end of the round. So yeah, that finished my one travel action. However, the reason I got this composer tile is because it says for the rest of the game, every time I play a travel action, I get to do one more travel action, which is fun. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is another travel action, and I'm going to have Mozart travel over here. That costs one money to travel at one distance. Again, I could have gone over here and spent a bunch of money, but I like this better. Um, so I spend one money, and then I will take this tile, and that's going to cost one travel point. I don't have any on the track, but I do have this here that I just got, and that increases my finances by one, and then this is discarded, and I like that turn. Yeah, no, that was pretty <laughs> solid. I'm, I am relieved being that I think you buried your second travel action, so you won't be able to do four of them this, this round. It didn't. Oh, you didn't? Oh, nope. no. <laughs> well... That's a real bummer, because that's kind of what I was aiming to do this whole time. Um, so it looks like I'm going to have to either pivot or try to chase after you. Hmm. So this is what I have this turn. So I'm pretty sure this is the main action I'm doing, uh, which will be to help compose the Requiem. And I'm not going to be able to do both travel actions if I decide to travel next turn. So I'm going to tuck this underneath here, getting me some more travel points. So now I'm going to stop looking at my cards and I think I'm going to compose and you could go for the other one as well. I could. Yeah. So I'm debating if I want to be able to double sell or perform opuses, which seems pretty useful or to chase you on the double traveling all over the place. Yeah. These do these stack on top of each other. So if one were to get another one, it would be three travel actions per action. Yeah, I think they would. So I, I think, think they would. I think I'm going to go for kind of an immediate gratification because I do want to play a travel card this round because the bonus for this era is traveling. So yeah. Not, so while I'd love to get two down, it just wasn't in the cards for me this turn. So I yeah. think it's still worth it for me to uh, follow you on Ibler. Okay. Um, and I'm going to spend a violin. Uh. Ibler. So that gets me. So I need to spend my two composition points for Ducat. One income, which is a little bit unfortunate. And then I flip this over and I put this here, getting me one travel disc. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that's my turn. Nice. Oh, I draw my last card. Yeah, it's, it's my turn. I, I forgot to draw my last card. And I did want to point out that. Um, up to this point, we've been drawing two cards on the top of our deck, but in the uh, going into the last action of a round, we only draw one because, of course, there's nine cards in our deck. And the reason for that is because I'm, of course, going to choose two of these cards. One will go up and one will go down. But the third card, essentially that final card from the deck, is actually going to be saved over, and it'll be one of the cards that I start with in the beginning of the next round. Um, so that is definitely something to consider. Now, I, I do think I'm going to play this. It seems too good, <laughs> yeah. considering the bonus that I have. Uh, and then between these two, I think I like the idea of having this in my hand more. So I'm going to tuck that one. And now I'll do one travel action, and then I'll do another one. So with the first travel action, I'm going to head down here. That's going to spend one of my ducats. And then the tile that I land at, it's going to cost two journey points. And then I get seven ducats back. After that, I get one more travel action, and I am going to go all the way up here. So that's going to be two money plus another two money, so four money total. And on this spot, I can spend one travel action, and then I get to do this action again. I can essentially take a memory from up here and then swap it out with this card. Currently, there's two options that I can do. Uh, this is two money and one resource, and this is just one resource. I like the idea of upgrading cards. That is fun, but I've also already gotten rid of one cross card, removing it from my uh, deck permanently. So I think I'll go with this one. Uh, I'll go efficient. So that's going to cost me one resource of my choice. I'll spend that, 
And then I can swap these out. Mm -hmm. Then these will slide. And I am done with my last action of the round. Sweet. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to take a travel action. Sure. And I'm now debating if I want to guarantee that I can compose early next round or uh, be able to act act on my opuses uh, early next round. And I think I want to make sure I can get some more of these fancy bonus powers yeah. early next round. So I think I'm going to keep this card and I'll tuck this. So now for my action. So when I, I'm, th I'm looking at this location and I'm thinking that's going to either let me activate an opus, which will let me execute the top where I could get money and keep the opus and keep the opus or the bottom where I sell the opus, getting me more income and some victory points. I think looking at it right now, uh, if I were to do it, I probably would just take the money straight up, but who knows? Okay, so I think I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one Ducat to go mm -hmm. here, and I think I am going to ditch this... Starting Opus? The Starting Opus, being that I have the same power, and I think... Just I mean, getting income. The earlier. earlier you get income, the better it's going to be. Yeah, so I'm going to ditch that. And so I just have one hanging on the side of my board. And that costs me one wheel to do so. Then I will go one, so let's see here. It's one, three, four, or one, three, four to get to München. So I think I, yeah, I think I'm just going to be real expensive and spend four money. Go to München. And I'll spend my last wheel getting me... Three composition points. Three composition points. Was this a smart idea? Probably not. Um, but we're going to see what happens. Because <laughs> uh, I'm going to need some money later. But who knows? Uh, all right. I did that. I did that. And now... By the way, um, we haven't mentioned it just yet. But at any point during the game, you can spend three money for one... Uh, resource uh, token of your choice, but you have to immediately spend it. And you can spend one resource token uh, to get one money. So that's essentially five money over here if you wanted to spend it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I have some flexibility. But you do, yeah. yeah. There is a bit of flexibility there. All right, so that is the end of the round, I believe. Yeah, so um, after the main phase, we are going to move on to the maintenance phase. So this can happen simultaneously, uh, but we can do this in turn order just to see. So the first thing that we do is we get uh, stuff from our personal boards, specifically the story points that show up on the bottom cards that we played out throughout the round. Um, now, actually, the first first thing that we do is we zero out our tracks. So if this was here and that was over there... I just lose those. These all go away. But again, you keep all these tokens that you have. Um, so I did that. I was already at zero. And now this is going to get me three travel points. Then I'll get two talent and then three of the composition. And you can only store up to four. Any excess over that just gets you money. And obviously money is a good thing. Um, after that, we get composer rewards. These show up on composer tiles. We haven't actually taken any that match up for that yet. Those exist down here, and we'll talk about those later on. Um, now, finances. So that's this. So I'm going to get uh, one track bump of my choice, and I'm going to get three money. And I think the track bump is going to be journey. Um, after that, there's the period bonus. So Matt alluded to this earlier. These are randomly placed at the beginning of the, uh, the round. We're going to see another one of them soon. And this is going to give one point for every one of this specific type of action that's showing up on your tableau. So it was travel for this first round. I have two of those. So I'll get two points, which brings me up to two. And Matt, now you can do all this. Yeah, so let's see here. I'm going to get, I would get five talent points, but Tops out of four, so I get another coin, which is kind Not of nice. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> for me. Uh, one travel, and I have zero composition, so that's why I was so keen to get the mention last round. That makes sense. Yep. Then uh, I don't have any composer bonuses that apply right now. Oh, finances, yes. I get two more Ducat from down there. And then one point for having one travel action on my board. Awesome. Yeah. So now we can clean up. Um, the main thing that this is, is resetting all of the opuses that we've used. When we perform them, we tilt them to the side, but we haven't actually performed any. We've just seen one sold. I'm sure we'll see that at some point soon. 
and now the map. So every tile that's out here that does not have a gilded border is going to be flipped over. You haven't seen any yet because we haven't flipped any. As you can see, there is this gilded border around the outside, and these just got better. This is essentially incentivization. This spot went from being one journey for three of the talent uh, discs to now being one journey for three talent discs and a money and a victory point. Um, these will stay flipped over until somebody goes there. So essentially the spots that nobody visits, at least for one round, get better. And now we're going to refill these. Um, the cities have a number order on them. It starts with one and then it wraps around. And this is the order in which we place these down. We would also refill any of these if we had taken them from here, but nobody took any of them at the start. Uh, these give immediate bonuses and also end game conditional um, things that we're working towards, and I'm sure we'll see that soon. So next up, we have to do maintenance on the uh, card row. We're going to get rid of the four cheapest cards. They just leave entirely. Then we slide the rest of these down, and then... With this big deck of cards that's been split up, we remove all of the cards until we hit another one of these bonuses. And then that flips over and we put it here. So this says at the end of the next round's maintenance, we're going to gain one of the black talent discs for every compose opus action that we do during this round. Uh, that's opened up some era two cards. So we're going to refill the row with these. And they, in general, just are stronger. As you can see, these have double actions on them. And then pass first player marker. Yep, that's the last thing. This just goes clockwise, so we're just going to alternate. Yeah. And uh, now, oh, no, we missed something. These. <laughs> yep. Yes, that is uh, the cleanup for our player boards. We have to take all of the cards, not the card that was the last one in our hand, and these will be shuffled up into our new draw deck, and then we will draw until we have four cards in our hand. Of course, we already have one card, so we're going to draw three, and then we're good to go. So let me think. I want, I think, to... Opuses are going to be big, and I think I want to get on cheap opuses, and especially since I have so many talent points. Yeah. Also, there's an opus right here yeah. associated with travel without movement. Yeah, so there's a pretty nice on-the-board combination that uh, John was so nice to point out to me and uh, really take ease on me. Um, the unfortunate part is that Either have to. I'm gonna probably bury this one because it's. I want to make sure I can upgrade cards, and this is my better perform opus stuff. So I'm hoping I'll draw another cross soon. Mm -hmm. So here I go, uh, traveling. I'm not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna spend my one travel point currently right here to compose an opus. So I spent my one travel point, and I will compose this one, which cost me three ducat. And, and one, one talent. One talent, which I have in abundance. And then it comes with, you get a, a bonus talent. And I get cube. a bonus talent cube and four victory points. So three to seven. And then I'm going to just spend one Ducat to move here. With your bonus from that composer, yeah. With my bonus from the composer to spend this travel disc I have to then perform one religious. So this will go sideways, which costs me another talent. And then that gets me seven money when normally performing this gets me zero money. Yeah, so technically that's, it's seven plus zero money. <laughs> uh, seven plus zero money, that makes sense. So Still now a bunch though. I'm sitting on sitting on some cash, which is nice. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, and it's worth noting, you can't sell an opus that you perform with. So you oh, won't, be, you won't be able to sell this one in this round, but you could sell that one or perform with both of them. You know, mm -hmm. we'll see, we'll see. All right, I get to go. I have a travel card in my hand here at the start. I think I'm just going to do it. Um, the good spots can dry up a little bit, especially with Matt and I both having this bonus. So I do have to put a card down below, though. And I think it's going to be this, surprisingly enough. I kind of want to do both of these in this current round. So we'll see. We'll see. I will tuck the performance. So the perform or sell action. And now I can travel. Um, I. I'm going to head here to start. Uh, that's going to cost me one money. And then this is going to cost one journey. And it gets me two points. It's pretty good. Uh, I go up to four. And then I can use my bonus travel. And I'm going to head over here. So that's going to be one plus one or two money. And then I can take this. And that's going to cost a travel point. It's going to come in with three of those talent 
discs, which is certainly a nice thing to have, especially considering you can spend them for money if you need to. Uh, that's also going to come in with another coin and a victory point. So not a bad turn, I think. Mm -hmm. no, that's pretty good. All right, I can draw two. And I am <laughs> done. Cool. So this is my current hand. And since I have no travel points left, I think tucking this is probably a good idea right now. And now it's, what do I do next? So I can either, I think I want to hold off on putting these down until I get this bonus token down here, which I'm hoping to get sometime in the near future. So I think I'm going to take a memory card and now I have some choices yeah. available to me. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So this is the last of the ones. And as you can see, the ones that we've take, taken, they have one action, but they come with some bonuses. Now that we're getting to the twos, they actually have double actions printed on them. Yeah, so I think I'll be paying two money and one talent to nice. take this, which is a nice upgrade to this card, which will let me improve cards in the future and get me more travel points, which yeah, I'm... Yeah, once you do them both at the same time. ...in desperate need of. Yeah. Nice. Cool. It's my turn, and I think I'm definitely going to go for this because I want more opuses. I just have this one that we start with, and this is incentivized this round. It doesn't give points, but it does give those uh, talent discs, which are certainly not a bad thing to have. There's no limit for these. I also need to tuck one of these and honestly i feel like i probably don't want to play both of these and this one's just better because it comes in with a couple of money so i'm gonna tuck this although that i do, I do suppose comes in with travel points oh that is a good point though how much do i care about two extra travel points versus two extra money you know what i think i care about the travel points more yeah <laughs> uh that might be different near the end of the game uh but yeah i think that is probably better because of course those two extra travel points can be spent as money so yeah we'll go with that now i can take an opus card these are the ones that are available uh, this one is cheap we've been buying all of them from here so far and i think i'll just take it i think i'll take it so that's going to cost one talent and two money and it will gain me one talent disc afterwards so i can spend the talent gain the talent disc i've got tons of those um i have to spend the two money of course and then I get three victory points mm -hmm. up to eight. And I can put this off to the side. All right, I'll draw two cards and I'm done. Cool. Let's, see, let's update this card row. The bonus this round is nice, but not necess not not super necessary, I think. Um, yeah. I think I want to compose, being that. You've been looking for that all round so far. I've been far. looking for it for all round, and I made the decisions like, oh, I'll clearly draw it next round, and that wasn't going to happen. Um, <laughs> and so now the question is what I'm going to tuck. I think I will tuck this card to leave myself some options for next round. Um, so now I'm going to compose, and I'm tempted to take either of these. This one would be pretty sweet, being that would give me three movement M movement yeah but that requires i get travel points and i'm currently not sitting very high on travel points also money and you know money, it costs money yeah. to travel around and you spend money on on taking these cards as well so yeah so i think i'm gonna try to diversify and get, make sure i can opus superly so okay. hopefully that will pay out well for me so it's gonna cost me two of these three of these and then one of these, which isn't great, but now I decide which of the instruments I'm going to put here. So I can either put the timpani, which gets me another composure point back. Uh, I can put the trumpet, which either gets me two money or a neutral uh, piece, or a neutral piece, which doesn't really do anything directly for me, but helps with end game scoring. Yeah. yeah. So that would be interesting, being that that would uh, certainly drive some action hmm, i think i'm mostly nervous about cash so i think i'm going to be a little bit conservative here and just put down that note yes yeah it's got to be the 16th note yep. if you're doing the bottom row yeah it's got to be the 16th note yeah this one's really tempting because then i could put down two 16th notes which right. means this becomes a lot more of an interesting question true uh, who's going to win but right now you're kind of fighting for both teams yeah so yeah, so I'm going to take this, which flips over and does that. 
And now I get two more money, which is important. Nice. Yep, and that's my turn, and I draw my last card. All right, it's my go, and I am also going to uh, work on hiring some composers. This is an upgraded card, though, so that's going to get me plus one <laughs> on the uh, composition track down here. I'm laughing because I don't really need it right now. I kind of have more than I can use in this round. Um, and this will also get me a money. The money is certainly good. And now I can compose. Now, technically, I have what I need to do exactly what Matt just did and perform better. Um, or do the perform or sell action uh, again when I do it. But that being said, there are some other good things out here. And I think I want to go after something a little bit different. Yeah, I'm going to go to this third movement here. And I think I'm going to go for this spot uh, from here. So that's going to get me one travel disc, which is definitely nice to have around. And then I want to put this down as a 16th note so that I can take that token there. And this is going to cost me two of my composition resources and three money. Then I'll flip this over. And this has an ongoing effect that says every time I purchase, sell, or perform with a symphony uh, opus, I'll gain a victory point. So clearly this is something I'm going to try to lean into and get a bit more points. It's not as action efficient as the thing that Matt is doing over here, but you win the game if you have the most points. So I'm hoping that will uh, give me a bit of an advantage. So that is my turn. Oh, no, it's not. I have to tuck a card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think it'll be this card here. All right. I can finish my turn by drawing my last card. I'm done. Sweet. All right. So I think... I so I'm going to take this action being that I don't really feel like performing what I have right now or selling it immediately. Yeah. And I think while this is would be awesome to start with, I think I'm going to tuck it down here just because of the sheer income it gets me. Yeah. So, I'm now going to compose an opus and I think I'm actually looking at one of these two cuz yep. that's a bit expensive. Uh, it's actually not I could actually afford it. So, do you I could. actually want it? Oh, it does cost more money. It's three, oh, money, it's three money. Yeah, I think I'll just. I think I'm going to go with this one, being it's not religious, which means it. Religion tends to have like special powers on the board, but not much bang for actually yeah. doing things. And I already have one of them, so I think I'm going to. Sure. Yeah. So that'll be two talent and two money. Two talent, which I got. Two money, which I got last round, and then I have this, and I put it. I want to put it right here for right now. Nice. And yeah, that's my round. All right, one more card. Okay, um, so yeah, it's my go, and I kind of telegraphed it a little bit with this. I'm definitely going to tuck that to uh, get another opus, and then I like the idea of having this in my starting hand. So let's tuck this, and now I'm going to go all the way over here. It's more expensive. Unfortunately, these two positions are the same. I was kind of hoping that we'd get discounted when mm -hmm. it slid, but it didn't. That's okay, I have a lot. So that's one, two three uh and then three money i suppose huh this one is the same cost no it's four talent but it performs for more money but it costs those performance points i think i like this one more yeah that one's pretty sweet yeah so i'm gonna spend four talent and three money and you know i've got a bunch of talent so that's fine um one two three four i say that's fine um <laughs> it looks like i'm only getting one more next round but either way either way i mean if you want to perform that's all that you need that is true that is true um so i took this uh, i also have to spend the three money certainly expensive but this now matches up with that so that gets me a bonus victory point as well nice now i can tuck this over here and that is me done yeah, as and well. the round. Yeah, that's the round. So why don't you maintenance yourself first? Yeah, so maintenance. So let's see here. First, uh, I look at my look at my story points, get four talent, two travel, one composition. Uh, I don't get anything from my composers. My finances, I just get one lousy coin. Oop, that's a five. One lousy coin. Uh, period bonus, I have one, so I get one uh, talent disc. And then I clean up, which means Your I cards. extract these. Cool. Uh, now I am going to reset my tracks. So I lose out on two journey points and two composition. I just didn't use those. Um, oh, well. <laughs> and then I am going to gain 
one talent. That is a little worrisome. But looking over here, these are cheap to perform. We'll see. We'll see. Um, this is going to be four journey points, which is great. And then two composition. Then I will gain three money and one track bump of my choice. And I'll definitely do the talent with that. Uh, after that, I don't get any income from here. Um, those exist down here. As you can see, that's the third step of maintenance. So if either of us had either of these tiles, that would just bump the associated type of resource on the track. But we don't have any of those yet. Okay, so the period bonus. I get one talent for every one of the Compose Opus symbols I have. I have two of those. I kind of forgot about this, so I'm doing just fine yeah, <laughs> when nice. it comes to talent. I, I feel very okay with that. All right, I can clean all these up. Sweet. And so I'll take care of the map while you're doing that. So I'm going to flip over any of the ungilded locations. And then I will add to the locations in order. So let's see, we have one, which means this last unseen one will pop onto the board and we will shuffle, shuffle up a new pile. Shuffle up a new pile. Then cards. Cards, yeah. The so these four flip. are going to go away. This flips. And so now oh, upgrading. Upgrading cards gives journey points at nice. the end of the round. And okay. Uh, oh, I get to be the start player. You do. Cool. These are my four cards. This is the one I saved over from the last round. And I think I'm just going to open with this so I can get the double travel going. And then between these... I'm going to tuck that. And now we can travel. I'm going to start by not moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this spot's really good. So that lets me spend one journey point, and I can compose an opus, and I'm going to compose this one right here. Uh, that's three money and one talent. I have the three money, although I don't have that much money afterwards. Uh, and then I have to spend the talent. And then that matches up with this, so I get an extra bonus point, which is why I'm doing it. I got a couple of those now. And then these don't actually slide until the end of my turn. Mm -hmm. So now I can do another travel, and I only have two money. I've got more journey token than I can spend, though. And I think what I'm going to do is travel up to Paris. That costs two money. And then I can take this, which is a court tile. It's the first one we've seen in the game. So the two money is the exact two money I have. And then I have to spend two journey which brings me down to one, and then I immediately get three money back, so that more than paid for itself as far as the money's concerned, and it's going to get me one victory point. Um, if this hadn't been flipped, I would have gotten less money and less points, but the flipping with the Gilded Border gives those bonuses. So that brings me up to 11, and now I keep this for the rest of the game. This is going to get me five victory points at the end of the game if I'm able to match opuses with it. Specifically, I need an era two, three, and four, and I already have... Two of these twos. Um, now, every single opus can only go towards a single one of these tiles. So, for example, if I took this as well that wants these specific opuses, um, I could not have the same card go towards this era two and that for the symphony. So if I had both of these, I'd probably keep both of those opuses. As it is, though, I might sell one of these um, to get some finances and then keep the other one for this. So, yeah, I'm going to keep this in front of me, and I'm just going to keep that in mind because I definitely want those five points at the end of the game. And... That has finished my turn, so I can draw two more cards. Nice. All right. Money is a bit scarce, and I've been playing a high-risk game, so I'm very at the mercy of my card draw, but I think I can mitigate some of it with playing a cheap uh, composition. Yeah. So I think I'm going to put those down, which then is going to let me put down a composition, and I think... I only I have up to two, and I don't want to spend any money, but I think I'm just going to end up spending one, and I think it's probably going to be the travel, because that's... Huh. Yeah, you essentially convert composition into travel points. Yeah, and I think I will make it to be the timpani. So I'll spend this, which gets me one of these from the timpani. I suppose I should. I went a little bit out of order, but then I also get two travel discs... So that gives me a couple more options in terms of my travel adventures. And then that goes there. And that's my turn. Awesome. It's my go. I just realized I forgot to slide these down, but it didn't really matter for Matt's turn. Oh, wow. Double travel right there on the card. 
All right, it's my go. And I think I really want to perform. <laughs> uh, I've got all of these opuses, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer because there's a card I really want on the market. Um, so I'm going to play this one uh, with that candle icon. And then because I'm taking a card from the market, uh, an action card, it's going to erase the card that I tuck under here. And I think I can't get rid of this. I've already lost one of those from my deck, or I guess decided to get rid of it. So let's tuck this briefly. <laughs> and now for the upgrade, I'm going to take this. That's going to cost two money and one resource. And the reason I want it is because, well, first of all, it's going to give me victory points when I do maintenance this round, which is nice. And then it's also going to give me double perform and sell actions. I don't think I'm going to be probably investing in that action down there. So this essentially lets me do the doubles just with this one card. Uh, I do have to pay for this though. So that is going to cost two money and then one resource of my choice. I think it's going to be a journey. I don't think I'll be traveling again this round. We'll see. So after that, I can get rid of this and tuck that one. All right. Hopefully that was worth it. It looked like a pretty cool card. Nice. That is that is pretty cool. So I now think I'm going to use one of my fancy cards that I got last round that I'm excited to see. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, do I think I'll be composing again this round? Don't. No, probably not, because um, I'm really short on money, and you need money to contract those compositions. Yeah. So I get to do this in either order? Correct. Sweet. That's very important. So I'm going to go here and spend two money to do so, and then spend two of my travel to execute this action, which is for each religious opus I have, I get three victory points. So I get three victory points. Nice. Um, and then I get one additional victory point for the guild and two money. One more point. And that will go away. And then I will use my second... Um, Your bonus travel. My bonus travel to move one space this way. Spending one money. Spending one money to spend one travel wheel to get one income. I think that... Yeah, that makes looks good to me. Makes sense to me. And then, yeah, that's... Oh, then uh, then I have my second action, which is... Yeah, you can upgrade a card or uh, take a memory. There's take a memory. three of them. Yeah, I think I'm going to spend this and one of these, because I tend to have an overabundance of them, to take this card. Cool. Which So will, you spent one of your uh, talent discs as yeah, money? I spent one of my talent discs as money. That's just a strict upgrade. That's just a strict upgrade. Very um, nice. Yeah. Probably, I've been trying to like keep, you know, not lose actions in my deck when I upgrade, but yeah, I'm not sense. sure if that's... I was eyeing that card because it, it gives you finance bumps when you actually upgrade. Yeah, so I'm hoping that pays off. Yeah, I I definitely was interested, but you only have so many actions. Mm -hmm. All right, it's my turn, and I really need money, I think. So I am going to perform one opus... Uh, again, it could be a perform or a sell. I'm just going to perform this one. So that is going to cost a single talent point. It's going to give me six money, and then I can tilt it to the side to show that I can't do anything else with it for the rest of the round. Uh, so I get my six money, and every time I perform or sell a symphony type, I get a victory point. So I also gain a point. Nice. And I have to tuck a card down below. I can't forget that. I think it'll be this card. All right, I'm done. Cool. So I think I'm now going to take another upgrade action this round. So that will let me, I think I'll just spend one talent point to take this one right here. And just nice. swap that out, keeping it real simple. Yeah. All right. It's my last action. I needed to have drawn this. Huh. And I feel drawn towards doing a Lacrimosa Requiem action. I have the card in my hand. I have two that's just going to go away if I don't use them. However, I also feel really drawn to this Opus. It's really good. If I sell it, I get two finance and three points. It also matches up with the Composer tile that I took. I'm going to go for it. This might be a mistake. I should probably be doing the Lacrimosa thing, but this seems more fun. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I'm going to tuck this because I think I want the journey points for the next round. 
Uh, and then I can take this. And another reason I'm doing this is because it's a three level. Oh, actually, hold on a second. I like this one for the finance bump, but I only get that if I sell it. And it's a three. I was going to say this matches up there, but I only get this if I still have it at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. It's still a lot of money if you perform it. It is. You know, I'm still going to do this, and I might sell it at some point in the future. I might be able to pick up another one of the threes. We'll see. We'll see. I think odds are actually low that I get rid of this. But either way, um, that is going to cost me two talents as well as five precious money. That gets me three points plus another one because this matches. I'm getting a lot of bonus points out of this composer, and I'm, I'm really trying to lean into that. Mm -hmm. So that is four points, bringing me to 16. And yeah, I've got a whole bunch of those. Yeah. Okay, that is my turn. That's cool. I'm going to finally take advantage of um, some of those little bonuses I've built up for myself. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to tuck this, and I think I want journey points. I'm going to tuck that. So now I get two money for the increased uh, play sell action. And I think I'm just going to sell my two chambers. My, yeah, my two chambers right off the bat. Um, that gets me four points. What does it cost you? Uh, it cost me, oh, thank you. Yes, it cost me two talent points, which I have in abundance. Right, because that shows up on the bottom of the cards. Yep. Yeah, thank you. And then, yeah, so I get four points for that, and I get two income bumps. So nice. I think... Well, yeah. I'm still technically ahead of you, although just barely. <laughs> You've been getting a lot of points from doing other things. Yeah. I just realized this should have slid. Yeah, that does not change my action, but yeah. No. And so now the round is over. Yep, okay, I will do maintenance first. Uh, I lose these, didn't use them. Uh, composer rewards, I don't have any at this point. Uh, finances, oh, story points, I'm just skipping right over that. I'm going to get one composition, two of the talent, four journey, and one victory point, and finances. That is going to be three money, and then one track bump of my choice. I think it is going to be talent? Yeah, I think I have that um, double um, performer or seller in here, so I think I'm going to want to use that in the next round, so I'll do that. And then the period bonus. So I get one journey uh, disc for every one of the uh, upgrade icons. I have one of them. So I get a journey disc. And then I can clean up my area. Nice. So my story point track, I just this reset this to zero. I get two talent, two journey, two composition for that. My composer rewards, no, none of those bonuses right now finances i get four money which is kind of exciting one victory point boop and another bump of my choice so it's either going to be talent or travel i have a lot of travel cards in my deck i believe so yeah. i think making sure i have a little bit more flexibility there will be good so uh, period bonus, then each book you have gets you two of those discs, so... Two of them. I get So one of those discs, sorry, but I have two of them on my board, so I get two. Yeah. Um, period bonus, and then clean up. Nice. All right, out here, we're going to flip over all the non-flipped tiles, and then see some new ones. Then we're going to lose four cards, and the next period is the fourth out of five. And it looks like writing Opus is incentivized two money for each one of those icons. And there's a lot of them. <laughs> These yeah. first four spots are all Opuses. Lastly, you get to be the starting player. Right? I do. I do. And here we go. Yeah. So this, my card draws are always just very amusing to me. They're never exactly what I want, but <laughs> I think that's kind of the game. Yeah, that's the idea. Uh, so being first player... And having all these travel points, I think I want to be able to try to jump on that as quickly as possible. So yeah. I think I'm going to travel, and then this is my less good opus action, and I don't really have much to do with that right now, so no. I'm going to tuck that. All right, so I have six travel points potentially, which is nice. So ideally I'd do both of these, but you can't perform and then sell an opus in the same turn, in the same round. So I'm going to spend one 
of my money to move him here, and then I'm going to uh, sell it. Sell it, uh, which costs you one travel point. Which costs me one travel point, and does it also cost me the talent? You should point? spend the track. Ah, uh, yes, I can. Thank you. Sorry, I I got overexcited. Um, cost me one travel point to do so, and then do I? Put, this is I have to pay the cost to sell as well. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I will spend the one talent point. Um, which would get me normally just two victory points, uh-huh. but this will get me two victory points and two income bumps, which pegs us out here. Yeah. So now if I go up anymore, I just get points for it, which is nice. And then I get an additional money. And a point. And a point. So that's three uh, points total? Three points total, yes. Cool. Very nice. And then you travel again, I and assume. And I travel again. Yeah. So I've been ditching opuses left and right, so I don't think going there makes much sense. Oh, one, two, three. Yeah, that gets me a net of four money, which is not trivial. One, two, three. We're talking this tile, which cost me two of these, and I have to pay my three money. You can gain seven. I gain so seven, so I'm four. just going to take four. Nice. And then this tile goes away. So. Nice, nice, nice. All right, it's my go. And I think I'm going to do something I said I wasn't going to do. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do this action. And then I'm going to tuck that one. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to afford to do this twice in this round. We'll see. We'll see. So this up here is going to get me one money, which is very nice. And then it's going to bump me up once on the composition track. And then over here... I think I am going to take this. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I talked about not doing it and doing other things, but considering I know I have a double um, card of that action in my hand, and every time I do that action, I do another one, that essentially turns that one card into a four activator, which I just don't think I can say no to. Yeah. Now, I have to go onto the drums or the organ to do this. The drums would get me one composition point. The organ would just get me a victory point, which isn't exciting. It's also not bad. And actually, considering that, I'm going to tuck a different card. I'm going to tuck this card instead. And then I'm going to do the drums to give mm-hmm. me that one disc. So that goes here. Uh, I will take that disc, and it has to go down onto the 16th note. So we are just uh, have a full tie down here, which is it functionally means no one's getting an advantage, which is fine. Uh, we're getting big advantages from these. Uh, this is somewhat costly, though. So that is going to be four money. It's going to cost both of this composition and one finance. The fact that Matt is here and I'm there is worrisome. Um, you mostly get your finances up by selling your opuses, and I'm kind of going for a hoarding strategy, at least at this point. I, I might end up selling some of these. Uh, so, yeah, this is paid for. I can flip it over, and at some point in the future, that'll be really good for me. <laughs> uh, okay, I am done. Cool. It is now my turn. I'm going to... I think I will join you in this composing effort. Yeah. So I get one of these, and then I would bump up on this track, but I hit the max already, so I just get two points, please. We're tied. Nope, wrong piece. Oh, okay. 21. (laughs) Yes, and then I think I'm going to tuck. This is so... I think I have other cards that get me more exciting upgrade, so I'm going to tuck that one. Uh, leave myself some options. So then I'm going to put a horn down right here, which lets me put down another horn. Yeah. So you'll finish that one out. I'll finish that one out, which means that Eibler is going to be the dominant composer in this section. So all of Eibler's notes will get three points each. Three point each. So I've sealed that one. It's yeah. not essentially. Even- six but essentially three points to one because this is neutral Mm -hmm. it just sways the tide it does not actually give points yep nice that cost me two of these and two money and i take this i put it in the horn section so now i believe opera opuses get me those sweet points that john's been uh raking in raking in throughout (laughs) the game so yeah i believe that is all of my turn i draw my two cards All right, well, I didn't draw my double performance card yet. It's one of these three. It's it's coming. Um, I think what I'm going to do is travel. I've got a whole bunch of travel points, so I should certainly do one of those double travel actions. And then I think I'm going to tuck 
this card, it's actually going to go away by the end of this turn. So to start things off with the travel, I am going to move once um, with this one travel move. That's going to cost me one money, and then I can take this. So the money goes away. I spend one travel point, and then I get two money back. I get a victory point, which brings me to 18, and then I get two resource discs of my choice. I think I'm going to take a composition and a talent, and then this goes away, and now I get to do another travel action. I'm going to travel up to here. That's going to cost me one more money, then one travel point, and then I gain two money back. Very so, nice. Sort of a... Slight money-making venture. I gain another victory point, which brings me to 19. And now I can take a memory card. Unfortunately, they're all super expensive <laughs> right now. But this one is pretty good. Um, you get two money when you play it. Then you could do a Lacrimosa action, which is all about uh, it's sort of in-game stuff, but also very much end-game scoring. Uh, and also a sell or perform action, which will be a bonus one for me. So I think this makes sense. That's going to cost me three of my precious money and one resource, which is... Problematic. I'm <laughs> down mm -hmm. to just one money. Uh, and then the resource is, I think, going to be Journey. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be journeying again this round. I might. And if I do, I could spend these. Then this goes away. And then this will replace that, which is also nice, getting me more of the talent and a couple of points. All right. These can slide down. You're up. I am. So this is my options for this round. I think I'm going to compose a opus and travel. And something tells me I'm not going to be double composing an opus this round. So this tucking this one seems safe. Yeah. You only got two talent points. Uh, it's also I don't have. Yeah. I only have two talent points and it costs money to draft them. So. Yeah. And you can, of course, spend three money to get any resource of your choice. But that's really expensive. Yeah. So I think I'm I'm torn slightly. I really would like to draft uh, the type that I align with, which are in the slightly more expensive positions. Yeah. Um, and going from three to four is really expensive. Five yeah. money to nine money. Yeah. And so I have to ask myself a quick question. Is it worth that single point to me? Or I guess it will be multiple points throughout the game. You know, I'm going to... I'm going to probably be a little bit silly, and I'll pay for this one. Okay. Which Two talent and five money. Two talent and five money. Yeah, this is feeling worse and worse by the moment, but we're going to... <laughs> no, no, this feels a little bit short-sighted, so I'm going to take that back, take that back, take that back. So I think... This one just seems like a great way to make some quick cash, which... Yeah, one talent for seven bucks is, is pretty good. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do that. Um, one you, talent and four bucks? Yeah, one talent and four bucks, even though it's not my preferred suit. Yeah. Uh, I think I can make use of it. So that cost me one talent and four bucks, which I need. I paid five. I should get one back. And then three points. And three points, please. All right. And then I have my movement action. Oh, right. Yes. So that was another reason I wanted to save a little bit of money. Uh, yeah, he is a little bit stranded, which is kind of a pain in the tuchus. Actually, yeah, no, this, kind of, this is going to be a little bit weird. So I'm going to go pay one, two, three, four money. Yeah. That puts me there. I'll pay getting me this. So I'll pay my one travel cog, getting me three travel cogs, and then getting me, oops, I, I need to pay this money, getting me... One money and one victory point, please. Up to 25. Then I will spend this one money going there. And so I will pay another cog to get victory two times the victory points equal to the number of chambers I have. So this was actually a pretty good draft this turn. Yeah. So that gets me two more victory points, please. Plus an additional one for the so guildiness. Three, three points. Okay. And then two money. So I think that worked out reasonably well. Yeah, that looked like a good turn to me. And now it is your turn, John. All right. I drew the mega card, so we're doing that for sure. And then as far as a card to be tucked, I don't think I'm going to be traveling in this last action, so I'm going to tuck this one. So now I'm going to do one perform or sell action, and I'm going to sell this. Um, 
I've had it along all game. It's the one we start with. Uh, the selling is going to take one talent, and that's going to increase my finances by one, which is very necessary, and that's gone. And then when I perform that, this will give me a bonus of being able to do another perform or sell action, um, and I'll perform here. So that's going to cost me one talent, and it's going to get me six money. Now I can activate the other perform or sell action, and I am going to perform here. That's going to take one talent, and it's going to get me five money. And then, of course, this activates again, uh, because every time you do one of these and it matches, you gain one extra. And over here, I'm going to spend zero and gain three money. So I just got a lot of money. Oh, actually, I got more than money, uh, because every time I uh, sell or perform with this specific type, I get a point. So I also get three more points. Very nice. Yeah, that felt like a good turn. That did. All right, you're up. I am. So I think... Well, I'd love to uh, play this card. I think I need to make sure I have money to start the next round. Yeah. So I'm going to get the two money for tucking that card. And then I also will uh, perform. Unfortunately, I only have one opus on hand. Yeah, you don't get the bonus. I don't get the bonus. So I'll spend my one uh, talent token, getting me seven money, which I think... So this is the two money from the card, and then two more money. You're going to be pretty rich, considering you have six more money coming yeah, in. Yeah, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. And now it's the question, do I draft cards and have an instant travel action, or do I have a a, a Lacrimosa to use right to start away? The next round, yeah. And I think having a Lacrimosa is actually probably what I'm going to do, even though this is a less e exciting card. This also gets me more resources, which might be able to do something with. So I, yeah, so I tuck that, and that is my last go of this round. Nice. So I have to choose one of these, and I have a good travel plan, but it's going to get better when the spots I want to go to flip over. So I want this to be the first action of the next round. I'm going to be the starting player. So that means between these two, I think it makes sense to actually upgrade into a really good card that I can use in the final round of the game. So that means this is going to be the card that's tucked, and honestly, I don't mind getting more talent considering the performance engine that I have going on. So now this lets me take one of these two, and while doing two Lacrimosa actions in the final round could seal in a lot of victory points, I also really need to get a uh, level four uh, opus in order to get these five victory points. And so because of that, I need this composition. So I'm going to buy this card. It's going to cost two money and one resource. And the reason for this is because I'm about to get rid of this composition card, and that's literally the only composition card I have. So by putting this in here, I have one composition that I can do in the final round, which, spoiler alert, will be a four so that I can match up with this. Either way, I do have to spend the two money and one resource, and then I can tuck this in, and these will slide down, and that's my turn. Sweet. All right, so the round is now over. So yeah, flip up that card. So now we do our upkeep, so my story points reset, and then I get one, two, talent, three, travel, one, composition, then my composer rewards, I don't get anything particularly fancy. Uh, my finances, I get six money, which is nice. Yes. Uh, more importantly for me, three victory points, so 28 to 31. And then I get one of my choice, and I have a feeling I'm probably going to want composition being that I feel like... There's a lot of points doing the Lacrimosa. Yeah. yeah. So, And I'm pretty well set on travel, which I have a lot of cards that give me travel bonuses. So I think that's probably yeah. my bonus there. That makes sense. And then I clean up and take all my cards out. Cool. And you can reset this as well. And I can reset that as well. Thank you very much. All right. I don't have to reset these because they're already over. Then I am going to get one, two, three, four of the talent. Uh, I'm going to get one journey. Ooh. Well, a good thing I have these. <laughs> uh, then I'll get one composition and then four victory points. That's not bad Oh, for dang. just the bottom of these cards. That definitely That's pretty made cool. me feel a little bit better <laughs> about the victory point track. Uh, then... I don't get any composer rewards. Yeah, neither of us have taken these this game. Yeah, it's, it's I mean they're I, fine, but we've yeah. just been doing other things. I think one of the things is like right if one of us popped over here, like right. Yeah, this court tile gives four points if you have a token in the two and in the four. And so far, we've been dodging these. The four is just a way to cash out for points, which is also nice. Yep. Uh, not bad things, just not things we've been doing. 
So finances, I get three money, which is pretty paltry compared to Matt. But then again, I got a mountain of money from uh, doing all those performances. Uh, I also get one track bump of my choice, and I think it's probably going to be composition. I've got two over here already. I know I have a couple of composition I could potentially do. I think this is probably going to be better for points. Uh, the period bonus. Matt, did you do this one? I did not. Do you remember how many times you commissioned an opus? I think I've, none. No, I got one because that's where I got this. Ah, yes, yes. that's true. That's got, true. So you get, should have two extra money. Sweet. Uh, great. So I, I did it no times. <laughs> yeah. So I don't get it at all. Uh, yeah, so I can clean up. Sweet. Obviously, these all reset so I can use them again. Hmm. You're both sitting on a fair amount of money, actually, at the start of this round. Yeah, a, a lot of options for this final round of the yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it feels as though, like, there, you have a constant trickle, but there's definitely, like, a bit of feast or famine every now and then. Yeah, yeah. So I'll flip over any unflipped tiles. So that's cool. Then, yeah, we'll fill those in. Salzburg, Prague, Berlin, Lyon. And now we need to make another deck. We've, we've been traveling a lot this game because of that bonus. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but there's four of these composers, and they each have their own sets of these tiles, which are similar in theme, but different in activation. And because we have the person who incentivizes traveling, we've just been traveling a lot. Also, traveling is fun. Yeah. Yeah, traveling is a lot of fun. It it uh, it, it reminds me a tiny bit of uh, Notre Dame, which I oh, like. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can see that. Okay. Now these four go away. Yep. Let's see if I will ever actually use that uh, bonus I get. <laughs> So the fifth round bonus is going to be one point for every composition action you do. And as you can see, in the fifth round, um, we just have more mm. cash out things for the actions. There's no actions up top. Um, all of the fifth round uh, memory action cards are identical. Okay. I am the starting player. You are. Final round. Well, it's my turn. And since the end of the game is looming, I think we should talk really briefly about what's going to happen there, <laughs> so you can see why we're doing things. The game is going to end after the personal board part of maintenance, so we will get our finances and uh, whatnot, and that's important, because at the end of the game, we are going to get one point for every two resources we have. So we'll count up all of our tracks, add to that all of our discs, divide that by two, round down, and get those points, and then our money is also worth uh, one point for every three money that we have. Uh, on top of that, we'll potentially get points for these court tiles, which so far I only have one of these. We haven't been doing a whole lot of these this game, but you definitely can get a lot of points from those. And then, of course, we're going to get points for the Lacrimosa area like we've already talked about. So I get to start things off, and I think traveling is probably the right thing to begin with. That's going to get me two money. Mm -hmm. I've got a whole bunch of it, and now I will travel, and I'm just going to go here. Uh, it's going to cost me two of my mountains of money. Then that will cost one travel point. It will get me two money back, so it paid for itself. And then it will get me three victory points. Very nice. Then I get a bonus travel action, and I'm going to head here. It's going to cost two money, and I can take this from Paris. So that's two money gone. That's two more travel points I need, and so I'll spend these, I guess travel resources. I keep saying travel points, but hopefully that's not too confusing. Uh, and then that is going to get me one composition resource disc. It'll get me one money and one point, which brings me to 30. And now this is going to get me four points at the end of the game if I have a one and a two to go to it. And as you can see, I have one, two for this, and then two, three for that, and I just need a four, um, as I explained before. So I think this is going to work out. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, that is... Oh, that's not my turn. I jumped ahead again. I have to put a card down here. Well, part of me feels like I want to put this down there because both of these seem really good to go in this round, but... These also give victory points if they're down here, uh, as opposed to being up there. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And I'm definitely going to be playing this card 100%. But this one, I'm not so sure. Um, that would let me do a performance which gives money, and that is victory points at a rate of 3 to 1. As you can see, I'm kind of mathing everything out to not want to sell any of these anymore. So I think it actually makes sense to tuck this card and not do the actions on top, um, strictly to get those extra points. We'll see if I regret it. Nice. I will likely tuck this card as well <laughs> at some mm -hmm. point. I guess that's the other thing. If I'm likely going to tuck this anyway, maybe I should keep this just for flexibility. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. Yeah, yeah. 
I think this one's probably going to get tucked, but for sure this one's going under. Okay, we can draw two cards, and I am done. Nice. So it's my turn. So this was my initial draw. So I think I want to Lacrimosa first. And I think hmm, I'm torn between tucking this one and tucking this one. But I definitely want to keep this one. So, hmm. Although I have a better one of these in my deck. So I think I'm probably going to have the uh, another opportunity to do this. But when that is, we may never know. <laughs> well, we'll know. But I don't know right now. And I've been playing this game very risky. So let's just continue that pattern. Uh, throw caution to the wind. So what am I doing? I'm doing a Lacrimosa. And the Lacrimosa I am doing is over here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to... Let's see, I have the choice. So they're everything in this column just gets you victory points. Yeah. So this one essentially get and the difference between the two is just how many victory points and how much they cost. So this will ask me two more money for one more victory point. And the question is, is that worth it to me? And I, I think the answer is probably yes, because it's a better conversion ratio. I'm sitting on a pile of money, but you know that could dry up really quickly, but let's see how that goes. Yeah. So I spend one composition... Um, four money, and then one income to grab this tile. And I will say it's acquire. That makes sense. So increases I guess your finances, yeah. Increases my finances and puts that back here. And then how many points did you get for that tile? And how many points did I get for that tile? I got three points for that tile, please. All right. Um, so that was the extent of that turn. Nice. All right. I get to go, and I think I will just take care of this one right away. I do have to tuck a different card. And I'm actually starting to think maybe it's good I didn't tuck this one last round. I might actually activate this one just for the cross, just to do a Requiem action. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, there's a world where I feel like these might be my final two actions. We'll see. I have some more tuck options. I, I don't think I'm upgrading, though. So I'm going to put this in here. And now I can do these actions. I'm going to start with uh, getting an opus. So I need a four in order to make this work. There are three fours available, surprisingly. And considering I have no interest in selling and this one is cheaper, <laughs> I'm just going to go for this one. I think this makes a lot of sense. So that does not have any extra cost. It is going to take two of my talent. Um, it's also going to cost five money. And then that will get me four victory points. Mm -hmm. So I go up to 34. We're tied. Nice. You got your extra bump from that, right? I did not. No, I did miss that. Thank you, Matt. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, cool. So that goes there. These can all slide around. And I've got both of these locked in. So that's nine extra points, which feels pretty good. Nice. Uh, so now I have to do a Lacrimosa action. Got quite a few options available. Um, let's see. Five composition power and a whole bunch of money. I think I'm going to do the organs, the mm -hmm. organ pipes. So I'm going to put this over here and I am going to compete. Yeah. I'm going to go with the 16th notes. So that is going to give me that towel. And let's see, that's going to cost one composition, two money, mm -hmm. and one income. I'm definitely not going to be high on income this game. Uh, that's going to give me two points immediately. And then. Uh, I go here, and that covers up yet another victory point. So very nice. Go there. Cool. That is my turn. Very nice. Very nice. So my turn, uh, I think this round I'm tucking this because I also... Oh, speaking of that, these should slide down. But yeah, yeah. this right here just gives four points. Yeah, and I have that which on... Which is nice, but, you know, there might be other things that are better. Yeah, I have that as part of another action on another one. So I, if I want, if I choose to do it, I can do it then also when it gets cheaper <laughs> yeah also when it gets cheaper so yeah. um this i think i might have another uh i might have another draft another opus so i'm going to hold off on this one because i have another card that lets me do that and this one is my is an unexciting travel so i don't think i'm going to do this one and i do want to execute this so i think i'm going to do it now even though john's put me in a little bit of a pickle uh so First things first, I'm going to get my one composition point and then two points for topping out on my income track. Very nice. So I'm now slightly torn. If I go here and uh, double down, 
uh, on double down on mine, John can come in and double down again. Yep. And it, and then we're no better off than where we were before. Or if I leave it here, John can then take the lead, which could be a lot of points being that that's what this row is, Yeah. which I'm nervous about, but I, also, I mean, this is less points, yeah. but it's still that's so good. I'm, I'm oh, because you're I, eyeing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that might be a better plan. So yeah, with so that's what I'm hoping to do. Actually, yeah, that's exactly what I was planning on parlaying. I see. I see. So now I think I will take this one and. Uh, which one do I want to do? Uh, At this it, point, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really You'll matter. You'll get the resource, but it'll just get converted into victory points. Exactly. Uh, I was more seeing if they had slightly different costs. Oh, so sure. I, I don't know. Let's throw Sadler some bucks, being that I think I've been a little bit fond of Eibler. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll pay the one composition. Uh, we'll pay the two money. And then we'll put an organ down. So that goes here with the 16th notes uh, sliding into here. Plus one point when and, you cover up the organ. And giving me plus one point. So John and I are now... Neck and neck. Tied again. Tied again. Nice. And then I draw my cards. And All that's, right. that's it for right now. Very nice. Well, yeah. I mean, I think I have to do the thing that you were worried about, but also assumed I was going to do. Yep. Um, yeah. So I will play this card that I almost... <laughs> I almost tucked that the first round. Mm -hmm. I am so glad I had a change of heart on that. Um, I have to talk something else. It's definitely going to be this because I'm probably playing that on my next turn. We'll see. I mean, it's a mountain of money, and money is worth points at a 3 to 1 rate. We'll see. Either way, um, I guess if I don't play it, I could go down there and get a point. So up here, I'll start by doing this. You get this. your two money first. Uh, I'll start by getting my two money. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's two-thirds of a point. Uh, so yeah, I'll do this. I, I don't want to sell anything because I have exactly what I need for these. So let's just start with the best stuff. Um, this up here, that is going to be one. Actually, no, the best stuff is the point things that give me points. I'll probably activate everything, but I may as well do uh, this one first. So that is going to be one talent. It's going to get me six money. And then it matches up with this, so I get a victory point. And then, speaking of these, that lets me do another one of these, and we'll go for this one. Mm -hmm. So that will be another talent. That's going to get me five more money. And then it matches for another victory point. And now I can do the Lacrimosa action, and I do want to lock this in. So yeah. I'm going to go with the horn, which is going to be up here, with this neutral pawn. So yeah, that lets me do this, and mm -hmm. then I can flip this over to the... Double uh, to the sixteenth note. To the sixteenth note, and then yeah, I take yeah. that, and I'm assuming I can afford it. I honestly didn't crunch it. Yeah, it looks like I'm fine. Uh, that's going to be one composition. It'll be three money, and then one finance. I don't need finances. I've got performances. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then that token gets me two points immediately. So I go there, and yeah, this one is fully blocked in, and it looks like. Uh, yeah. The sixteenth notes are going to take it. Yeah, you're going to net nine on me over there, so Ooh, that's pretty sweet. That is pretty good. But yeah, if you had done the other thing, you wouldn't have had access to this, and yeah. we would have tied. And I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that was big turn for me. Yeah, that was I pretty. That was pretty this, good. And I'm done. So let's see here. So this is my splay, and uh, this card is going to be pretty sweet. So I'm going to play that one right here, and I. Th I think I'm going to have more than enough opportunities to perform or sell any of my opuses, so I'm going to tuck this over here, mostly to not, uh, mostly because I still have that option later if I want it. Yeah. So now, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I think I will draft an opus. I have just wow. Yeah, the, the <laughs> display has not been particularly nice. I'm kind of regretting having drafted the one I drafted. I, oh wow, there's it's everything but that. Yeah. Oh jeez. Yeah, and like last round when there were some, there were they were also kind of expensive, and we haven't seen many of them. I don't think we've seen many of them this game. Yeah, uh, we we do discard from these decks uh, two action cards and two opuses from each of the five in a two player game. It's possible that both of those were that type. I don't know. Yeah. They were random. Yeah. So. Uh, slight limitations there, but moving forward, ever upward. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I think, okay, so I think I'm stuck. So I'm going to draft an opus, and I think I unfortunately don't have the performance points to take advantage of of them if I were to draft any of the non-religion-based mm -hmm. opuses. So I'm going to spend uh, seven money and two of my talent points to 
draft this cheap one. one. Oh, and it comes in with a rebate. Yeah, it comes in with a rebate, which I think is going to be very important in the near future. Okay. Then I will execute the second part of my action, which is travel. So I'll go here and pay three. You're in the court game. I am in the court game. So I now spend one wagon wheel, which gets me uh, a <laughs> wagon, wagon wheel token, <laughs> yep. uh, a money, and a victory point, please. Up to 38. Sweet. And now I get to decide where I go next. Yeah, you get that bonus travel. Get that bonus travel. It's so. expensive. So it is expensive. <laughs> Traveling from London. <laughs> yeah. London is a not cheap place to go to. Oh, yeah. So what I'll do, I think this makes sense, is I'm going to go pay four to go to Berlin. So that's all my oh, cash on okay. hand. So this lets me do a performance action. Perform or, or sell. Per perform or sell. So I will spend my one wagon wheel to do so. Then I will perform my chamber opus. Uh -huh. So that cost me that, netting me seven money. Yep. And then I will spend three of that money to convert that money into a talent token. Yes. To then sell my religious. Oh, okay. Opus. For three points. For three points. Yep. That makes sense. Three money for three points? Yeah. Considering three money is normally one point? Yeah. Hey, look, we're tied again. Uh, three money for three points. Boop. Yep. <laughs> nah, that was a good turn. Yeah. I think ah, I, that was cool. Yeah, it was. It, it would have been sweet if I had one more. Right. Because uh, um, then I think I would have been able to do something a little bit more fancy, but alas. No, that was cool. That was cool. Mm -hmm. All right. These slide down. All right. Well, this is my last action of the game. And I kept saying that I was going to do this. And it was an amazing action in the last round. But if I did it right now, I would get 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 money, which is essentially three victory points. Mm -hmm. Like one money shy. I haven't crunched it exactly. It's two or three points. If I go down here, it's two points. Like one or two points because mm -hmm. every two of these is worth a point. And I, I do have another Lacrimosa action. And I think that's going to be better. So... Strangely enough, <laughs> I end up tucking this one and playing that one. Um, I think this worked out better. So yeah, I'm going to tuck this one up here. That is going to give me one of the composition point. It'll also give me a money. And this is going to be my last action. And it's going to be putting horns down for two money or this uh, cello, I think, down mm -hmm. for one uh, talent. And the only places I could put either of these down is movement one and two. Uh, I don't know if Matt has another ability to actually do a Lacrimosa action, so I have to kind of assume he doesn't and force a tie and then see where it goes. Uh, if I go here, then that's functionally one point because we'll tie and get one point each. If I go here, it, it's functionally two points, uh, and it also knocks down a couple points from Matt. Um, if Matt goes here, then he's going to be you know four to my two. I still think this is probably better overall. So something to note is I can't is if I do have an action I can play here I can't play here. Oh, because I only that is have valid. a stringed instrument. That is a good point. That's a really good point. And I guess either way I'm knocking your token down by two, three to one versus four to two. Mm -hmm. Huh. Also, if I go over here, you guarantee that we essentially earn no points on each other. I do. Yeah. No matter which one I pick, so I could take the cheaper one, not spend money, which means that money could turn into. Bonus points yep. at the end. Okay, I think it's the horn. I think it's the horn. So uh, I will take this, put it over here, uh, and I will go with the 16th note just so that I spend less money. I take that. It costs one composition, and that's it. It gives me two talent discs, which is functionally a victory point. Um, well, as long as I'm even or odd. We'll see. <laughs> it's yep. Zero or one points. And yeah, this will go here, and I take two money. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, that is my last action. I think that worked out better than alternate options, and I just don't use this card. Nice. All right, Matt, your final turn. My final turn. Do you have a Requiem? I do not. Woo! So I think All right, phew. <laughs> my best option is to do that, and then I will tuck this because it has the biggest number on yep, the bottom. That makes sense. And this card will not get played. So I've been trying to mull over in my head what I want to do with traveling because I also want to be able to afford a card. So I'll probably be burning some discs to do some things, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, you can spend discs to get discs on your yeah, way. Yeah, that is probably what's going to happen. Yeah, so I think I'm going to spend three money 
and one resource to, I think, grab this upgrade. That makes sense. Uh, so it converts at least so it converts one point into four points, which seems like a pretty good upgrade. Yeah. And now I decide if I want to do one zero or two travel actions. So I think one of them I'm going to go here, spend my one money, and and two travels to get five discs and i think i'll just take five travel discs because it's fun yeah and it makes it it's all going to be converted to points potentially later and i might need it for something else so sure sure that I makes sense did that then um let's see here i spent four discs to get three discs that sounds like a bad exchange you could also go here i mean it's a it's a point like you, you're not going to get this bottom part but let's see here i would go here i'd spend i'd spend one disc I'd spend two discs to get a point, a money, and another disc. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I think that's better than nothing. Exactly. So I'll go there. I'll spend that disc. I grab this, uh, causing me to spend another disc, which gets me a different disc. Yes. <laughs> a money, and then one victory point. Yeah. So right now, I am winning. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and then I believe my turn is over yeah that's so, it. so yeah we go into the last maintenance phase of the game yeah we'll just do the personal board part so story point tracks i reset this and then i'm gonna get to travel one composition not that the actual colors matter <laughs> three talent well, they do matter in case you top off right that is true. Okay, you're right. That is true. That is true. Uh, and then I also get one victory point, so we're back to being tied. Nice. Then I don't get any composer rewards. My finances are awful. <laughs> <laughs> I get one money. Uh, and uh, the period bonus. Uh, every time I composed or did a composer action up here, I get a point. I did it once. So one more point, and that is it. I don't really need to clean anything else up. Sweet. So uh, story point. I reset my board already, so I have two talent oh uh, and then one and one for each of the others and then i get four points for yellow yellow 42 46 and then on over here i get six money three points yeah and then one of these i'll just take uh these are converted at a better value so i'll do the lower one in case i get more which I will. Oh, no, you add them all together into a pool. Oh, I add them all together. Yeah. No, no, in case I topped off for oh, whatever sure. reason. And then I believe over here, yes, I get another yep. talent. For that composer tile. Uh, story points, composer, finances, period bonus. I have one of them, so I get another victory point. Sitting all right. on a nice 50. And then clean up, uh, which I don't think we actually need to do. No. So now it's time for final scoring. Yep. Uh, the first thing that we score are the court uh, tokens. Mm -hmm. So as we've shown, I have the one and the two. And then I have two, three, four. So that's five plus four. That's nine points. So 43 to 52. Yep. So I go over here. And actually, the way I show I went to 50 is on the board. You take this and you flip it over to the 50 side. Oh, very and nice. And if you cross 100, you just ditch that. So... So I'm at 52, and then Matt. Yes. So I did not complete this one, but I completed this one. So that Because you have at least one in the four one and at least one in the two. Exactly. Yeah. So I get four more points. So that goes to 54, and I do my lovely flip. All right. Next up, we score the Requiem. So mm -hmm. we can start over here. So we each score one point, John. Yes. One and one. So I score four points here. Yeah, because uh, the 16th note is better. Mm -hmm. So nine, 59. Yes. Uh, we each score one point here. Yep. So we're tied again. <laughs> here you get a good jump on me. Yeah. Uh, so 12 points because, yeah, there's one, two, yep. three 16th notes. So each of those is worth six. Yep. So uh, 16. And I just get a poultry three. And then for the last one, we each <laughs> get uh, two points each. Yep. One, two, one, two. Super close. And then now we can convert the story points. So I've got four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Divide that by two, round down. So I get seven more points. Mm -hmm. So I go to 75. Uh, so each two is worth one, correct? Correct. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven, eight. Yep. Eight points for Matt. So 
seventy three. Yep. And then money. Yeah, I think this is, this is what steals it for you. Yeah, five, ten, fifteen, twenty four divided by three. That's perfect. Uh, eight. Yep. I have seven, so I get two. Two points. Yep. GG. Yeah. I was relatively close to it at the end, so seventy five to eighty three. Yeah, no, that was I, 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 I felt pretty confident you were gonna pull it out in the end, since I felt a little, a, a little bit more scrappy than I think you were. Interesting. Yeah, um, I was worried. I felt like you had a lead until, until this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't necessarily think you made a mistake. I think you just found yourself in a position where I was gonna net a significant amount of points over there. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it just felt like your cards were stronger. Uh, I, I, at that point, like yeah. going into the fourth round, I didn't think like super stronger. Um, but also, you know, you made an interesting point. Like you took um, this composer bonus and you got zero points out of it. Yeah. And I took this composer bonus early and I got one, two, three, plus another six. Like I probably got nine points yeah. out of this over the course of the game. And that's, you know, the gap between our scores is... Is is that, is, is is that roughly that, yeah. Yeah, that, that's definitely something. Also, you know, I got one more of these. Like, it was a little bit here, a little bit there. I, I think it was realistically quite close. Yeah, I think I think another slight misplay was I, I was trying to be somewhat cautious here, but I probably should have done my other trumpet in this location, so... Yeah, the, the trumpet, I think, uh, you know, being able to place this neutral down... It does seem like that's better at late. And yeah. so this is my second play, and it's your first play, Matt. Yeah. So I have just a tiny bit more experience with it. And that was one thing that was in my mind after my first play is like, you want to use the, the, the neutral token when it's going to give you a really big swing. Yeah. And that, that wasn't a very big swing. No, I think uh, I was just, I also think, yeah, at the time, like, for, yeah, for some reason, I was, I was, yeah, as I said, I was being cautious. Yeah. Just being like, I can seal this up and never have to think about this one again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, no, I think. I think I knew in my heart of hearts that the correct column to play it in is probably this one <laughs> because of how much more how or this one because of just how much more valuable they are than the other columns. Yeah, well, potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, when I took this one to get the bonus from the symphonies, I think there was two showing out here. Yeah, that specific the symphony opus type, and I was able to get you know obviously three of them overall. It, that was part of my calculus when I decided to go for that because I knew I could potentially really get that value. Yeah, I. Yeah, I mean, I probably could have, I don't know what my exact state was. I probably could have followed you on these, and it probably would have worked out. I probably would have gotten a couple of points from it, yeah. meaning I would have done a couple of things slightly differently. But yeah, I was just anticipating, you know, it being, that they're them showing up a little bit more and a little bit more available to me. But yeah. as I said, I was, I was, I was not playing particularly precautious, which I, you know, I was just, that's just how I was feeling today. And yeah. I think if I was playing a little bit more care, like a bit more thoughtful with, which cards I was playing and setting myself up to make sure I, my, like what resources I had versus what I was hoping I draw, you know, is, is a bit, was a bit better aligned. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. again, if this is your first play, like, yeah, you, 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 overall, I mean, it was very close. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, 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 en I enjoyed it a fair amount. It was, it, it, it felt pretty, it felt pretty sweet. I liked the idea that, um, you know, as you upgrade your cards, while you don't get them immediately, you don't, you sort of get them immediately. They They're, upgraded income. They upgrade income, which is a nice, uh, pretty uh, clever idea where it's like, you know, you're not getting the full potential of it right away, but you're definitely getting... You're, you're definitely getting something for it, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. This The last time I played, we had different composers, and I really like these composers, you mm -hmm. know, getting the extra travel and getting the um, extra activation, like, you know, build an engine and then use it. The other composers, um, th their plus options involved every time you do a Requiem, you can do another Requiem action. So this filled up a lot faster, um, almost too fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the other one was a uh, compose opus. So when you compose mm -hmm. an opus, you can compose another one. And that one is pretty cool. Like, yeah. you know, they, because there could be a bunch of these out here, and it's a really good conversion ratio to victory points, you know, especially late game. We didn't buy any of the fives, but like this is two talent and eight money, which is uh, functionally five victory points for eight points. I guess that conversion ratio isn't amazing, but if it... Uh, lines up with um, court tiles or that kind of thing. I mean, still plus three points is significant. The gap between yeah. us is eight. Yeah. And, no. Yeah. I think. Yeah. There was many times where I was like, particularly early game, where it's like, oh man, I wish I could draft two opuses at the same time. Yeah. Which definitely would have been really nice. Um, yeah. I thought it was pretty cool that you went so hard on income and I I didn't, mm -hmm. and 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 we both did really well from that. I think you got four or maybe six points from this uh, over the course of the game at least from yeah. bumping up the the income track and, and yeah, being yeah. At the end. being at being at the top was pretty sweet yeah like i think i maybe 
over prioritize getting the double um action for yeah. my cell a little bit a, a little bit early so i think i write i probably could have taken one of another another one of these in lieu of that and gotten that at start later. getting some resource income yeah as the game went on like it probably would have been better if i Instead of jumping on this one, jumped on one of these. They're also was, cheaper. Yeah. Um, you know, this uh, fifth movement costs income. Yeah. And so, like, that's also potential loss points. Yeah, I, I made really good use out of this, even though I got it a bit after you. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I over-prioritized it. That was one of my mistakes. But, like, when I play a game for the first time, there's usually a couple ways I do things where it's either, like, I try to just go super balanced and just kind of leave myself options for... Right avenues to go down or i tunnel really hard on one aspect of the game that will cause me to lose the game because that's not how you play the game <laughs> um and so this one i try to uh play pretty uh evenly so i was yeah. like yeah let's let's just leave myself really flexible so i can do two of this thing or two of that thing and i should have seen that's like all right doing two of the uh performer cells performer cells is like a two-step process while the move action is from the get-go a essentially a one-step process so yeah. like that one's obvious you get early but the other one is like you no know, you get it at the right time you can also exhaust yourself on them like either of us could have taken that other plus travel and then had three travel actions with each one but we just run out of resources like yeah. travel resources and money and uh and yeah with the activations i kind of always had a big stable of these opus cards ready to go and you had three at one point and then you sold down which increased your income which was huge but definitely lowered the effectiveness of that Bonus yeah. to do more uh, p perform slash sells. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I think something I also did was I kept when I upgraded my cards, I always replaced a card with a better version of the card before it. So, so you stayed balanced with the actions. I stayed balanced with the actions. So like probably staying balanced for like this action was kind of was probably a slight mistake if I knew what I was doing in the beginning because right. then I could potentially have made sure I had more of other things that I could have leveraged because I wasn't really using this all that often. I wanted to use it like a couple times in the game. So I needed to make sure I had one, but not, um, but I think having two, which I currently have. With the performer cell icons? Yeah, well, I think I just just went the last in, at, yeah. at the end of the game. Uh, at the same time, like I had that as well, but this lets you be explosive and lets you do other things. Yeah. You know, in this last round, I, I ditched my double perform or sell, which I could have used, so I didn't ditch it, but I, I tucked it down to the bottom and only used one at the top because it just made that more efficient. You only yeah. do 20 card tucks per game. Yeah. So there's also, I think, something to be said for, you know, getting that bonus and then ditching all of those cards. So you can just do that, certainly for the perform, like do all your performances, and then move on to other things because yeah. you can only perform once per round. Yeah. Whereas travel, you could just keep going, but of course the options dwindle. Yeah, yeah. It's now this is a nifty little game. I I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I'd yeah. be curious how it how what what the flow of the game feels like at a higher player count. My other play was at three players, and it, it didn't feel terribly different. We didn't have a lot of AP or anything like that. There's less blocking tokens mm -hmm. down in the Lacrimosa area, and that's and and I think we discard one less card from each of the decks at the top, but that's it. Mm -hmm. um, really, not much else changes. Um, so yeah, I can imagine like a four player game with the bonus to travel, like it's possible that most of the tiles on the board yeah. would get taken each round, but maybe not. Maybe because the, the less good ones would just be avoided and, you know, only so many people can take those bonuses. Other people could lean into different directions. I, I do think that the Lacrimosa scoring will be more interesting. Not yeah. that it was boring in a two player game, but I think it'll be more intricate and interesting at a higher player count. Yeah. Like it's. There's it's, a lot of like, you know, I'll equalize this advantage instead of like, you know, netting on this person and netting on that yeah, person. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely in this game, it definitely made the neutral token, I think, considerably more powerful, particularly like in the smaller regions. Yeah. Where it's just like the first person to go there kind of like sets a st tone and then you can respond and then it's just like, okay, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, I really, I, I really enjoyed this one. This was a this was a good time. Yeah, it was a lovely game. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for joining me again, Matt. Yeah, not a problem. I'll hopefully see you again soon. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you, too, would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com slash support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.